Hello, my friends. Here we have another installment of our book in the chapters in the book called The Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. We're going to find out now what happens the next morning after Red had broken the rule and said all of those things and told the story to Samar and Stephen. What do you think happened the next morning? Chapter 41 Morning emerged slowly, heavy with clouds. A light rain had fallen just before dawn, soothing my leaves, if not my mood. Oddly, the ground felt saturated. Spring was always muddy, of course, but this was unusual. It would make for a messy wishing day tomorrow. An early rising old gentleman with a bamboo cane approached. He paused to attach a small piece of blue tape to my lowest branch, using a bit of twine. He didn't say his wish aloud, so I couldn't tell what it was. But he had a satisfied smile as he stepped carefully through the soggy grass. No doubt I'd be seeing more wishes today. Many people came early to grab an easy-to-reach spot. This would probably be my last wishing day. How could it be? that my first one, that long ago day with Maeve, still seemed as fresh in my heart as my conversation with Stephen and Samar from the previous night. A car slowly slowed to a crawl near the curb and I saw an arm, a blur, and then splat. Something hit my trunk. Splat, splat, two more times and the car roared off with a screech of tires. Bongo was the first to report on the damage. Raw eggs, she said. I'm assuming that didn't hurt. Didn't feel a thing, I said. Fresh baked bread, hairy spiders, and Big U ventured out to inspect the situation. Big U slipped under the police tape and licked one of the yolks sliding down my trunk. Mmm, she said. Raw, just the way I like them. Hey, Big, share the wealth, Harry Spider snapped as she and Fresh joined her. Agnes watched from her perch. I'd much prefer a squirming mouse pup, she said. It's all yours, ladies. What a nice surprise, Big U said between slurps. This is not nice, Bongo said. This is people at their worst. Still, said Harry Spiders, licking her paws, It'd be a shame to let a perfectly good egg goo go to waste. One creature's nastiness is another creature's nibble. Big U gave a satisfied burp, and the animals scampered back to their homes. The door to Stephen's house opened. He walked over to me, saw the eggshells scattered like puzzle pieces, and scowled. Samar was next, a backpack slung over her shoulder books clutched to her chest. She leapt over a muddy puzzle, puddle and joined Stephen. Jerks, he muttered, gesturing toward the eggshells. Sorry, Samar. But Samar held up her hand. Stephen, she said in a low voice, last night... Stephen nodded ever so slightly. His eyes locked on me. Last night, he repeated as if they were speaking in code. The tree. The tree. You heard what I heard, Samar said. I did. Samar looked right at Stephen. You heard the tree. I heard the tree. Samar gave a little nod. So it was maybe a trick? Somebody playing a joke on us? Maybe we were both sleepwalking at the same moment, Stephen suggested. He nodded as if trying to convince himself. Yeah, sleepwalking. Have you ever sleepwalked before? No, but there's a first time for everything. They stood there, looking at me expectantly, willing me to speak. At last, least that's how it felt. I stayed silent. I'd said my piece, and I regretted it. 
Stephen, Samar said softly, what happens? Whatever happens, we can't tell a soul about this. Deal? Deal. Ever. Ever. <sighs> Samar sighed. People would say we're crazy. They'd probably be right, said Stephen. Samar jutted her chin at me. Tree, do you have anything to add? I didn't say a word. Samar and Stephen shared a smile. Figured it was worth a shot, she said. They headed off to school together. Stephen's father came out onto the porch. He was holding a cup of coffee. He caught sight of Stephen and Samar and frowned. A moment later, Samar's mother stepped out of the blue house, her keys jangling, a briefcase over her shoulder. She followed her neighbor's gaze. Both parents watched in silence until Stephen and Samar, walking side by side, disappeared from view. Chapter 42. I didn't have much time to mull over my mistake. We had a steady stream of visitors as the hours passed. Early wishmakers came throughout the day. A little girl who wanted twenty hamsters, a grocer down the street hoping for a summer of sweet peaches, the usual. The local reporter returned. She peeked at some of the new wishes hanging off my boughs and took a photo of the broken eggshells on my trunk. Sandy and Max came to remove the police tape surrounding me. Francesca joined them. Today, she had Lewis and Clark on thin leather leashes. Each cat was wearing an embarrassingly sparkly harness. Francesca discussed the broken eggs with Sandy and Max, while Lewis and Clark wove around her legs. I've got a tree cutter coming out later to give me an estimate, Francesca said. So you're definitely cutting it down? Sandy asked, in what I like to think was a disappointed voice. Yep, no question. See that muck, all the water in the yard? Francesca pointed at the soggy lawn. Plumber told me this dang tree is plugging up some of the pipes. At least bit of rain and the yard turns into a giant mud puddle. Still, still people are going to be sorry to see it go, Max said. He reached for Clark's leash and tried to unwrap Francesca. I know, it's a good old tree, but sentiment doesn't pay the plumber. Sandy grabbed Lewis while Francesca attempted to unknot herself from the leashes. What about the animals and birds that live in the tree, she asked. Ah, uh, that's where I'm using the old noggin, Francesca said. Every year, the opossums and owls and such vacate the premise on wishing day. Strangest thing, it's like they know what's coming. She hopped over the web of leashes. Suppose they don't like being disturbed. In any case, I'm hoping the cutters will come late tomorrow afternoon. Most of the wishing will be done by then. What will you do with all the wishes? Sandy asked. Put them in the trash when no one's looking. That's what I do every year. The whole thing's nonsense anyway. Max and Sandy looked at me sympathetically. I know, I know. I don't have a sentimental bone in my body. Francesca paused to address the cats, who were yanking her in the opposite directions. If dogs can do this, why is it such a challenge for you two? She turned her attention back to the police. But it's time, more than time. Well, we're going to swing by tomorrow, keep an eye on things. No lead on the person who carved that word. But with the eggs and people just generally riled and the cut down, Sandy shrugged, couldn't hurt to have us on hand to keep an eye on things. Thanks, Francesca said. Not necessary, but I appreciate it. Lewis and Clark caught a glimpse of Bongo and lunged for my trunk. Whoa, you crazy felines, Francesca cried, reining them in. They hissed at Bongo. She spread her wings menacingly and let out her most ferocious caw. Lewis and Clark retreated for the safety of Francesca's arms. Once again, she was tangled in a knot of leashes and cats. Sandy smiled. Maybe leave the cats home tomorrow, Francesca. Chapter 43 That afternoon, I met my executioners. 
Not having teeth, I never really understood the fear people seem to have of dentists. I've overheard conversation where the roots, words root canal and cavity were used, but in tree world those have different meanings. After seeing the tree cutters and their equipment, I understood. When a truck carrying powerful chainsaws, along with something ominously called a stump grinder, shows up, well, you know you're in trouble. Mind you, an arborist is a great friend to trees. We need our limbs trimmed, just the way you need to cut your fingernails and hair, although for us it's only once or twice a year, and it's called pruning. I always feel especially elegant after a good pruning, but pruning is usually done with special shears that look like giant scissors or with a small saw on a long pole. Stump grinders are generally not part of the plan. It didn't help when three men wearing orange hard hats went to Francesca's door and announced they were from Timber Term Terminator's Tree Service. I'm going to make a deposit on those silly hats, Bongo muttered. No, Bongo, I said, although the idea was tempting. Let's wait and see what's what. Maybe they're just here for some pruning. You really are an optimist. Francesca walked the men over, this time without Lewis and Clark, and they discussed costs and timing. That's right. They talked about cutting me down even as they enjoyed the shade from my lovely limbs. Talk about insensitive. One of the men, he introduced himself as Dave, climbed a ladder to inspect my hollows. Agnes, Harry Spiders, and Big U eyed him warily, ready to defend their babies. You got some critters here, ma'am, he reported. Yes, yes, I know, Francesca said. Every year like clockwork. Bongo flew up to a spot near Agnes. Just one deposit, she muttered under her breath. That's all I'm saying. Situation like this, we generally advise cutting in late fall, less likely to disturb any nests. I've got that covered, Francesca nodded, hands on hips. Animals and birds hightail it out of here every May 1st, wishing day, you know. Dave scratched his stubby chin. Wishing day? People make wishes, put them, on, put them on the tree. Animals and birds don't like all the noise. If you could do this tomorrow afternoon, the timing would be perfect. You work on Saturdays. Sure do, Dave shook his head. Wishing day, he murmured. Now I've heard everything. Francesca nodded. She patted my trunk. Yeah, craziness. Can't believe I've put up with it as long as I have. That's where we're going to leave it for today. And I think we'll be almost finished in the next time. We'll see what's going to happen. The rest of Wishing Day and the people to cut down red. But right now, let's have a prayer. Gracious God, you know that when there are days that it all seems to be going wrong, we know that you're right there with us. So even though things may not be great, continue to be with us. Help us to have that hope and those wishes and a love for you and for all people. Amen. Now it's time. Time for you to wash hands and face. Time for you to make sure you've got your jams on. Time to say good night.